Are you ready for this? Ready? Are you sure? Woo -boo! Crazy, right? I might have taken a wrong turn. I'm in the weirdest stairwell right now. Oh, maybe not. Now, before we get too far into the video, I'm gonna make one thing clear right off the bat. It's not a review. This, this video is not a review. This video is gonna be solely a first impression, a first look, if you will, because I just put this lens on my camera for the very first time. It'd be a little bit silly to act like I've been using it for a while when it's my very first day. I don't even think I could pass that off, so we're not even gonna try, but it should be interesting nonetheless. So if this isn't what you're looking for, no hard feelings, you can leave now, save us both some time, what this video is gonna be, I'll just tell you the whole plot right now. I'm gonna be exploring a couple places. I'm gonna be using this for architecture photography, and obviously I'm gonna be trying it out as a vlogging lens. So that's the premise of the video. If you want it, stay. If you don't, bye-bye. Oh, and one last thing, just because I think I might have forgot to say it, I'll be shooting with a Canon 10 to 22 millimeter lens. I'm borrowing this lens. I have to return it tomorrow. Wanted to get the video out today, but I don't think I said that earlier. Hopefully you, uh, I'm assuming you read the title, but either way, there you go. All right, so for those of you who don't already know, maybe because you don't follow me on Instagram, I was actually in New York City last week and I got some incredible photos. The architecture in that city is absolutely insane. I was in love with it, but I ran into a problem. So while I own a large variety of lenses, I've got some primes, I've got some zooms, I don't have anything wider than the kit lens, which is 18 millimeters. And some of the buildings in New York City are absolutely massive. Now, to get around this, I just took panoramas consistently again and again, building after building, but this isn't ideal. You really don't know exactly what the photos are gonna look like before you take them. Sometimes you get some weird warping. It's not the best way to go about architecture photography. So now that I'm back in Seattle, I got my hands on a Canon 10 to 22. I'm borrowing it. It's not mine, but I've got it for the day. And I just want to see what it can do, see what a difference it makes going from that 18 minimum to a 10 millimeter minimum. That's crazy wide, although it is on a crop sensor camera. That being said, we're going to get straight into the video. There will be no more lollygagging. That's enough dilly dallying. We're already at the first location. Let's take some photos. Wow, okay, so first impressions, it's kind of obvious, but this lens is wide. Like even just vlogging with it now, I'm not even holding it. Is this even focused on me? I'm not even holding it all the way out. Like I can still, I can still do this, which I don't know. Do you guys like how it looks? Uh, I'm looking on my screen right now and it looks ridiculous. It looks like I've got one of those 360 cams just way out in front of me. Definitely, definitely distorts the face a little if you're on 10 millimeters. Okay, so first impressions, I like the lens. In fact, I like it a lot. Pretty much every shot I took with it, I wouldn't have been able to do at 18 millimeters. I was on 10 millimeters pretty much the entire time, shooting nice and wide, capturing this massive architecture, but it was a little difficult. I definitely got some cool trippy looking shots with reflections in different angles, but nothing, Nothing I would really post, <laughs> which is fine. I'm totally new to this architecture photography. Definitely not my strong suit, but the lens is a lot of fun. It's nice and wide. Captures a, just an incredible amount of stuff, especially if you're trying to catch reflections. A panorama is not really the ideal way to go about doing that. So that was super fun with this lens. I didn't have to and then stitch it all together in post and hope it looks okay. I can do everything right in camera, which if you're an architecture photographer, it's gonna speed up that workflow a lot too. Now, again, I wasn't super happy with any of the shots. This was a tricky building to shoot. The angles are just so weird. Nothing's really perpendicular. Like, look at that. The angles are just crazy. I got some interesting shots to say the least. For vlogging, I like it. I like it because I don't have to hold my arm all the way out. 
It makes it a lot easier. I'm less likely to get some sort of vlogging shoulder injury. So that's neat. The lens doesn't have image stabilization, but I really don't think it needs it. Because when you're at 10 millimeters, no camera shake is going to be that pronounced when you're shooting that wide. I wish I had more time at this location because you know, the, the shots weren't great. I need more time. I'm new to this. But I've got two more spots I want to hit before sunset, which is in about 40 minutes, so we got to get going. Cutting it a little close, but if I can catch the bus right up here, I should make it with just enough time. Probably. Just enough time. All right, so we made it. We got a decent amount of time. Let's talk about these next two spots. So both of them I've tried before. Both of them I felt like I couldn't get wide enough to get the shot I wanted. So I'm super excited to see if this lens can handle it. The goal is to get both these shots by the time the sun is set. Is that plausible? I don't know, but that's the goal. All right, so we're at the first spot. If you follow me on Instagram, you've probably seen this shot before, and you've probably realized it could look a little bit better. So what we got behind is we got these fancy, you know, I don't know what they're called. Uh, we'll call them wavy pillars. So you got these fancy wavy pillars. As you can see right there, the space needle fits right between them. And we've got the Museum of Pop Culture on the right, which makes for a really cool shot. I took it before, I didn't love it, I wanted to get wider, it was also at night, you couldn't really see the sky, so we're here at sunset, just in time. I'm going to try and get that done, and then we've got one more spot that's close by that we'll take a look at next. Oh, we've got such a sick shot going on. You can even see the moon between two of these, what are we calling them, wavy beams. So sweet, I think. So right now the Space Needle is nice and golden and beautiful, but the sky is still blue. So we might hang out here just for a little bit longer to see if we can get the sky changing color. But I've got one more shot I wanna get, so timing is everything. Honestly though, so glad I've got this lens. It's working so well. 10 millimeters, incredible focal length. All right, so that shot went pretty much exactly as planned. The last shot is gonna be taken using this building. And oh, hey, there's a little bit of a spoiler of what we'll be doing. All right, vlogging with the backup cam because we don't have a lot of time. This is a very time sensitive shot. So here's the setup we have here, tripod, camera, right against this wall. As you can see, there's one space needle. As you move closer to the wall, you get closer to two perfect reflections. Also right here, we have the light rail. This light rail is gonna come moving across here. It's coming. And we're gonna try and catch a light trail, long exposure of it as it comes across. <laughs> that looks so good. Probably can't see that, but it's looking good. We're gonna take a few more exposures as it gets a little bit darker, but huh, like right as I was set up, pulled out this camera, it came, and I think everything's lined up. The hardest part is this shot's supposed to be as symmetrical as possible. Problem with symmetry, if it's perfect, it looks really good. If it's not perfect, it goes downhill real quick. It is getting dark extremely fast though, so I'm gonna find some light and then we'll wrap up this video and I'll tell you my overall thoughts and experiences with the 10 to 22 by Canon. Oh my, look at that shadow. Oh, there it goes. Is this too dark? I don't know, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. I'm gonna find somewhere I can sit down. Ugh, so, kind of a fast paced video today. You saw me shoot a lot of photos, you saw me explore Seattle. It was a fast vlog style video, but I know what you're thinking. What about the lens? Well, that's what we're gonna talk about now. So again, I've got the Canon 10 to 22. That's what I was shooting with today. Let's talk about it. So as I explained at the beginning, I got this lens because after going to New York City, I was on like a architecture photography high. I was like, this is so cool. I just want a super wide lens. I wanna capture absolutely everything. But here's the catch. 
didn't want to spend the money. So I found someone I could borrow this lens from and I have, what is it? I'm bringing it back tomorrow. I'm also leaving Seattle in two days for the summer. I'm done with school. Finals are pretty much over. I've got one more. So I knew if I wanted to get my architecture photography in, I had to do it now. Now this video is not a review. I could talk about the specs. Obviously it's 10 to 22 millimeters. The aperture goes from 3.5 to 4.5. But since it's not a review, we're not gonna worry too much about that. I just wanna tell you about my experiences with the lens. So maybe you can get a good idea if it's something you would invest in. And I'm still trying to figure out myself if it's something I would invest in. So I think my favorite thing about the lens is it opened up a new door for photography for me. Like I said, I've never shot wider than 18 millimeters. So being able to go to 10 was like, it reminded me of when I started shooting with a telephoto lens. You could capture things you just couldn't capture before. Shots I might've normally given up on. In fact, some of the previous shots I sort of had given up on, I was able to get with this lens. That's super, super cool. Again, I know you can take a panorama with your DSLR, stitching, eh, stitch it together in Lightroom, something like that. But having a wide angle lens opens up a lot more possibilities. For instance, the last shot I got had reflections in it. It was a long exposure, so we had light trails. You can't, at least to my knowledge, you can't get a panorama of that. It just, I don't think it'll work. If you can, someone please correct me, but I just don't see how that's actually possible. So if you're trying to get into architecture photography or you need a wider lens, this is a really, really solid option. How does it compare to the 10 to 18? I don't know. But I will say this, if photography's gotten a little bit stale for you, or you do have those shots in your head like I did, of shots you hadn't been able to capture before, it might be a fun investment for you. That being said, it is a little bit of a specialty lens. You know, when I think of this, I don't know how often I would actually use it if I'm not shooting big buildings where I can't back up much farther because there, there's another building. You know, I just don't know. I would never take portraits with this because it distorts people's faces so much. I wouldn't shoot sports with it. I wouldn't, even landscapes. I might do landscapes, but I rarely do panoramas from. I normally find 18 millimeters is more than wide enough. So it's not that this lens wouldn't work, but for me, I don't think I'd actually end up using the 10 to, probably 10 to 14 millimeters very often at all which makes it a little bit redundant. Now for vlogging, I don't know how well it worked. You guys tell me, it's not an STM motor, but it's a USM motor, which means it's not actually super quiet. Kind of quiet, definitely not the most quiet, but I would assume while vlogging, you wouldn't notice the noise much because it doesn't, my face isn't moving from the camera, so like the focal distance, the lens doesn't have to really focus very much. I don't know, did you guys like how it looked? It's not image stabilized, but I would assume at 10 millimeters, it's wide enough that pretty much feels like it. Did my face look weird? Was there too much background? Or was it better? Were you sick of seeing 18 millimeters where it's just zoomed into my pores and that's like consuming the whole shot? I don't know, let me know. I mean, I'll take a look at the footage right after this, but you could see firsthand if it's something you would be interested in. Now, as for me, would I buy the lens? Not at the moment. And that's for a couple of reasons. One, I don't shoot architecture photography very much. I'd love to but I just don't very much. More of a landscape and portrait guy myself. Portraits are what makes me money. Landscapes are like my passion. Like I said, I've had a lot of fun shooting architecture, but I'm not willing to drop $400 on this lens at the moment just to continue doing that. But it is fun. If I ended up getting a couple real estate jobs or something like that, I would totally invest in a lens like this because I would feel foolish using an 18 to 55 otherwise. On top of that, with the 10 to 18, I think a little over a hundred dollars cheaper with the STM motor. This is a really hard sell for me. I don't think the extra four millimeters is gonna make a big difference. And the fact that the other one is cheaper, has an STM motor, oh, it's not looking so good for this guy. All right, so last sell pitch. If you're into architecture photography, interior photography, if you need something wide to make money or that's what you like to shoot, get a wide angle lens, that makes sense. If you're into vlogging, Maybe if you like that focal length more. I feel like the 10 looks weird, but you do you. But I think a big selling point is if photography has gotten stale or there's shots you know you want that you can't get without this lens and you just wanna have fun, you wanna like, Ugh, if you want a new frontier in this photography thing, it might be worth your money. All right, it's late. I have my last essay of the school year due tomorrow. <laughs> Can I go work on that? I found a bunny.
There he goes. Anyways, that's it for me. I know it sounds like I'm bashing this lens a little bit, especially after I just got some pictures I really wanted. It's a nice lens. It's just... It's just not necessary, you know what I'm saying? I feel like I'm starting to sound like a broken record. I love the shots I got. I cannot wait to edit them. I could not have gotten without the lens. But there's only so many things you can shoot with a wide angle. And we have light. I guess the last thing I'll add is I fully plan on getting a wide angle at some point. It's just not on my short list. Because there are other lens that I would use more often that I want now. Anyways, that's it for me. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Hopefully this was helpful. I know it wasn't a review, it's just me kind of rambling, going around, having fun. But I like it. I love these fast-paced vlog style videos. So on that note, if you like the video, be sure to like it. If you have any questions, have any comments, hit up that comment section down below. And if you want to see more content like this, consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks again for watching. My name is Josh Winiarski. Check me out on Instagram. And I'll see you all in the next one.